Hi guys, and welcome to video six on SumPy. This video is a direct continuation of the other SumPy videos. So if you haven't seen those, then please click up in the right corner for the entire playlist. So the theme of this video is going to be evaluating expressions. And we're also going to learn how to make symbols which are positive, real or integers or so on. So as always, we are going to import SumPy as SP. So let me run the cell and let's get started with the theme of this video. First of all, I should explain why do we want to specify that we have a real symbol or a positive one and so on. The reason is that there are certain simplifications that only work when the symbol is real, positive or so on. So for instance, if you take lug, of the exponential function and want it to be equal to x, this is not true when x can be a complex number. Hence, we want to specify that x is real, so we can do this simplification here. As a standard, SumPy will interpret all symbols as complex symbols. So for instance, if we take set equals sp.symbol and then set, and let us also try this expression here, then we see that this expression is not simplified to simply being set. So let's try to make some real symbols instead. So I'm going to make x0, x1 and x2 to be equal to sp.symbols. And I'm going to use the notation x0 to 3. So recall that SumPy is always exclusive on the last index. So let me make them real by specifying that real should be equal to true. So now these three symbols here are real symbols. So let's see that this identity here actually works with x0. So instead of set, let me write x0 inside here. And now we have that the logarithm of the exponential is just x0. So you see that you have simplifications which are true when the symbol is real and not true when the symbol is complex. But you have other simplifications which is only true when, for instance, the symbol is positive. So let's do the square root and then take x0 to the power 2. And you see that this is the absolute value of x0. But if we knew that x0 was positive, then this here would simplify to simply being x0. So let's try to make a positive symbol, which I'm going to call x equals sp.symbol. And I want it to be x. And I want now positive to be equal to true. So x is now interpreted as a positive symbol. So let's copy this line and try it with x instead. So let me just remove the zero, run this cell. So now we see that since x is positive, when we take the square of x and then the square root, we simply get x back. We can also specify that we want our symbol to be an integer. This is done the same way as before. And let me call the integer n. And in this case, I write integer equal true. So let's take minus 1 to the power 2 times n. And now since n is an integer, we should expect that we take minus 1 to an even power, which is 1. So let us run this set and we end up with 1 being the simplification. So specifying what your symbol are, if it's an integer, a real and so on, is a really useful way to getting simplifications for free. Okay, the next theme of the video is how to evaluate expressions. So what we haven't learned yet is that if you have an expression with an unknown x, how do you insert that x is, for instance, equal to 2? So the first thing we need now is to create an expression. And I'm going to use a very simple expression. We're just taking x0 to the power 2 and add 5 here. So now x0 is a real symbol, but it shouldn't really make any difference for our computations. So let's say that I want to take the value pi inside my expressions. So how do I do that? Well, what I do is to take xp 
are my expression dot subs, which stands for substitute. I want to substitute x0 with 2. So everywhere I have x0, I want x0 to be replaced by 2. So let me run this cell. And then we get 9 because 2 squared to the power 2 is 4 and 4 plus 5 is 9. And we can also substitute in other values like pi by just doing this. One quick note is that, as always with some pi, we do not change the original expression. So if I do x per r and run this cell, we have the same expression as always. We can also use the subs method to insert another expression into our expression. So we can replace x0 with another expression. And this is done the same way. I use subs x0. And let's say I want to insert x1 to the power 2, run this cell. And now you see that x0 has been replaced by x1 to the power 2. So what you end up with is x1 to the power 4 instead of x0 to the power 2. So often when you do these kinds of substitution, you are not really interested in these kinds of expression with 5 plus pi squared. You want some numeric value. Luckily, SumPy has a really simple way to go from a symbolic expression to a numeric expression. So let me call this thing for num, because it's a number. And let me also give out num so we can see it again. And what I want to do is to take this number here and make it into a numeric number instead of a symbolic one. This is simply done with sp.n, which stands for a numeric function. And I can take in num. And here I get the numeric value of 5 plus pi squared. So here, I get a fifth in decimal representation, which is the standard in SumPy. But I can also get more decimals or fewer decimals if needed. So the way to get more or fewer decimal is to simply specify the number of decimals in the second argument. So I do sp.n num. And let's say I only want three decimals and I run this cell. And here I have a three decimal representation of 5 plus pi squared. As a final thing is that if you have an expression, which is for instance sp.pi plus let's say x squared, and let me also give it out. And let's say that I want instead of the symbolic representation of pi here, I want 3.1415 something something. So I can take this expression and make all the constants numeric by using the n function. So I can do sp.n exp like this. So here I get the numeric value of pi instead of just the symbol pi. This was everything I wanted to say about evaluating expressions. In the next couple of videos, we are going to go through how to do calculus in SumPy. If you like this video and want more SumPy to pop up in your feed, then please subscribe to this channel. I will see you again in the next video for more SumPy.